We have here an example problem. A sealed container holds 3.2 grams of oxygen gas at 1 atm, pressure and 20 degrees Celsius. The gas first undergoes an isobaric process that doubles the absolute temperature, then an isothermal process that halves the pressure. What is the final volume? Okay, so we're going to go through two processes. One, the first one is isobaric, meaning constant pressure. that doubles the temperature. Now when it says, uh, let me spell, doubles. When it says it doubles the absolute temperature, that means we're doubling the temperature in Kelvin. The second step is isothermal, meaning constant temperature. It halves, it cuts in half the pressure. Now, in terms of what we know, we have 3.2 grams of oxygen gas, but the ideal gas law is going to require us to know the number of moles or number of molecules. And so that's where we go to the periodic table when I look up oxygen, it's 15.9999 something. So essentially 16U or 16 grams per mole. Oxygen gas is O2, so diatomic. So 2 times 16, we're going to have 32 grams per mole. I'm going to use that as my conversion factor. The grams will cancel, and this will give me how many moles I have. So 0 0.1 moles. This is n, lowercase n specifically. So our initial pressure is 1 atm. Our initial temperature is 20 degrees Celsius which I'm going to go ahead and add my 273, so 293 Kelvin, make that look better. All right, so isobaric, our first process, we have constant pressure, so the relationship that applies in constant pressure is that V1 over T1 has to equal V2 over T2. So if our temperature is doubling, that means T2 is 2 times T1. The T1 will cancel. V2 has to be 2 times V1. So we actually need to know what V1 is to know what V2 is. So using this stuff on the right here, I can use P1 V1 equals NRT1, the ideal gas law at this initial moment in time to find V1. So my moles, 0.1 R, 8.31. Temperature, 293. This pressure needs to be in pascals because we're using the R value that's in terms of joules per mole Kelvin. So this volume initially 0 0.00240 meters cubed. 
So after this first, at the end of this first process, our volume is doubled. So 0 0.0048 meters cubed, which in the long run, they want this to be in liters. So let's go ahead and put that in liters. We divide by a thousand. Oh, just kidding. We multiply by a thousand because their one meter cubed is 1,000 liters. All right, so this is the volume at the beginning of the isothermal process. This isothermal process goes from what we've labeled as 0.2 to a 0.3, to a third moment in time. So because we're going through two different processes, the isobaric starts at our original moment in time and goes to a second moment in time. That second moment in time is the beginning of our isothermal process, which then leaves us at a third moment in time. So when we look at the relationship where PV has to be constant, I can say that P2V2 at this second moment in time, at the end of the isobaric process, needs to equal P3V3, the pressure times volume at the third moment in time that we're talking about. We're trying to find this final volume, V3. V3 will be P2V2 over P3. The uh, problem tells us that the pressure is halved, meaning if I half the original pressure, so the pressure at point two, if I cut that in half, that is my pressure at m moment in time three. So P2, V2 over one half of P2. The final volume is going to be double what we started with. So twice this 4.8 liters. We started the isothermal process with 4.8 liters. So what 9.6 liters is the volume we will end up with. The final volume is 9.6 liters. So we've gone through two different processes here, which is fine. We just do one at a time. And remember, the final state of the first process is the beginning state of the second.